Hey, good morning. I'm using my computer this morning because my camera is outside taking pictures of birds because I got a new bird feeder pole this morning and um, a new bird feeder too. So anyway, my phone is out there. Well, you know, I was thinking about how a lot of people, especially I would say people who are under 50 years old, that's 5-0, um, may be having a particularly hard time with all of the changes that the coronavirus has made in our lives. Uh, let me give you an example, okay? Like, I have a daughter who lives in Germany, and um, unlike the United States where you can get married in a church and the church minister is uh, legally has the right to perform marriages, in Germany you have to get married, um, uh, oh gosh, what do you call it, I forgot the word, you know, like it has to be um, at the town hall kind of thing. Uh, civil. It has to be a civil ceremony. That's the only legal kind. You cannot just go get married in a church. That is not considered legal. Now, if you have your civil ceremony, then you can go to a church and, you know, also have a church wedding. And by the way, they're in their towns, they have very nice places for civil ceremonies. It's not just, you know, like it is in so many um, places in the United States, like a courthouse or something that's, you know, some old building or something that was, you know how old public buildings are. I mean, they're not the uh, most attractive venues for weddings, but in Germany they have some really nice places. Well, anyway, so um, my daughter and son-in-law were planning to have a church wedding where you know relatives could come and we would come over from the United States and all that and don't you know COVID no travel uh, well since all that was planned she's had a baby you know planned another wedding now you know with the Delta variant who knows I have not seen my new grandbaby that she had um, in person. She had her last November. I don't know when I'll get to see her. You know, who knows when they're going to get to have their church wedding. But you know what I was thinking about? I remember my mother telling me, my mother was married, I think, around Oh, you know what? Actually, I can tell you exactly when she was married because I have her uh, marriage license hanging up here. Let me show you this. See that? Is that not awesome looking? So the date on this is, oh, uh, let's see. Everything is written in Hebrew. <laughs> Let me see, is there a date? I know it was the early 1940s. Oh my goodness. Um, okay, so not only is this in Hebrew, but the handwriting. Oh wait, 1942. Okay, got it. In February of 1942. So um, my parents were married then. And I remember my mother telling me about how she had had this longtime boyfriend, but, you know, he was drafted, went off to war. And my father, meanwhile, he was not drafted because he worked at the Brooklyn Navy Yard. And so he was doing his war service, you know, working on ships in the Navy Yard. So um, he stayed at home in New York. Anyway, my parents met and, you know, ended up falling in love, got married. And then, um, you know, her boyfriend that she had had for years before that 
he, when he came back, he ended up marrying someone else. Of course, in those days, there were things that were kind of similar to today, unusual circumstances. For example, you know, people would be, you know, boyfriend and girlfriend and have plans for the future. And who knows what the war, the effects of the war, you know, if there were so many young men who went to serve in the armed forces and didn't come back, or they came back, but they were unable to, you know, be able to live a married family life together. Um, or maybe their girlfriends had met someone else. Uh, you know, some men were away for several years. Also, I remember my mom telling me there was a shortage of apartments for like, you know, when people would get married, normally they would move out of their parents' house, right? Because back then, single people did not move into their own apartments as young as they do these days. So they get married but there maybe wasn't an apartment for them to move into. Now, this was in New York City, okay? So there were a lot of young married couples who were living with their parents in the same apartment. You know, I mean, that's, for Americans, that's different, isn't it? That is not something that we normally do or want to do, right? So when you look back at that, that is just as strange as the kind of things that are happening today. What I'm trying to say is that this is not the whole COVID thing and all of the, you know, different um, societal and cultural um, things that have happened because of it. It's not the first time things like this have happened, is it? And we got through it back in the 1940s and 50s. You know what? We'll get through this too. I want to say one other thing, which is I just recently listened to a book called The Waters Between Us. And I uh, can't remember the name of the author. But basically, um, he's probably maybe in his mid-60s when he wrote the book, which he just wrote in the last few years. And he talked about how in the 1960s with the Vietnam War and all of the, it's a very turbulent period in our country's history. And I only remembered it as, I was a teenager during those years. So, you know, my perception of things was very different than an adult's would have been. And hearing him reflect back on those times, one of the things he talked about that I never gave any thought to, but I think has um, an application to these days also, is back then, young men knew that when they graduated from high school, they were very possibly going to be drafted and sent off to Vietnam. And who knows if they would come back alive or if they came back, would they be, you know, maimed or um, disabled in some way? Or, you know, there was no telling. Um, and there were, this sort of contributed to the turmoil in society because a lot of young people who might otherwise have had plans for the future kind of, you know, went a little wild because they said, well, who knows what's going to happen? Almost like the mentality of eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow we die. Um, and these days, if you think about it, there are a lot of young people who you know, their schooling has been all disrupted. There are not a lot of jobs available uh, like there used to be, or perhaps the kind of jobs that young people would take. Um, and they feel like, almost like it's pointless to make an effort because you can't fight against the effects that 
coronavirus is having, not just in our country, but all around the world. So, you know, this has led to a, I think, a lowering of motivation and hope and positive feelings in a lot of young people. Um, anyhow, so sometimes it helps to understand, you know, to identify a problem and to have some understanding of why it's happening because then you don't feel quite so despairing about it and I don't know it just helps to go through a hard time if you can have some understanding of why it's happening so these are some of my ideas about why you know people are having a rough time right now and um, and also just the fact that this is not the first time something like this has happened in society. I remember when my mother told me about, you know, like having to move in with your parents when you got married because there wasn't an apartment. Like, whoa, oh my gosh, I cannot imagine that. Or the whole idea of, you know, I remember her telling me about his name was Irving Berger, her boyfriend from back then. <laughs> And um, how, interestingly, he married somebody named Sylvia, <laughs> which is my name. Anyhow, um, you know, I remember her telling me how, you know, they were in love, and they were going to get married, and all this kind of stuff. And then the war just broke everything up for them. And, and I just thought, oh my gosh, that's so not fair. But... Yeah, there's a lot of things in life that are not fair, right? So how can we weather these things? Doing the best we can, encouraging others, and encouraging ourselves, right? All right, I'm going to make a cup of coffee now, and uh, I hope that you have a good day and that you can realize that Difficult things are going on, difficult but not impossible. This too shall pass. We'll get through this too. We will. And it'll be easier to get through with a positive attitude and an attitude of trying to encourage others also. Okay, I hope you have a lovely day. Now, how do I turn this off? Golly, let's see. Oh, yeah.